got you into keeping these sort of things? Well, I think that they're, um, we look at this animal here, and besides being an absolutely beautiful Australian animal, we use imagination a bit. It's a living, breathing dragon or dinosaur. And this is um, probably the, the most popular lizard pet. This is the, the bearded dragon, Pogona viticeps, the inland or central bearded dragon. They do um, handle being handled to quite a w uh, without exhibiting any signs of stress. Mm. Um, they have personalities, they head bob, they change their colours, they're good looking lizards. And the um, yeah. great thing about them is they're, these are Australian animals that we can keep. Shudder to ask, but Riley, what's in the box? This is a Parenti. It's a it's a goanna. Uh, it's one of our largest species in Australia. He's quite a placid animal. Oh, isn't he gorgeous? Now that is a seriously beautiful animal. God, well, you'd like to hold him more. That's hard. It, it's really hard to believe that this is alive. So beautiful. How do you manage to raise them to have this sort of temperament or whatever? Um, just a lot of handling. You go in there every day when you're feeding them, just give them a little scratch and all that. Oh. Uh, they do turn into frenzies when you're feeding them. It's just like sharks, they all come out at you once if you've got three or four in a pit. Yeah. And uh, you can end up with some nasty cuts on your hands or even stitches. Have a look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous looking snake? That is, that is a very beautiful snake. They've got a very large tooth on them. Uh, they're one of the largest uh, f uh, two snakes in Australia because they're out in the wild all they really eat is birds, so they're going to have well, big teeth to get through the feathers. Obviously, a particularly placid snake. They are, they're a very nice snake. Now, the cages obviously are scrupulously clean. Yeah, so it's all oh, hygiene factor, Don. Um, like your lounge room, you wouldn't want to be living in a room full of feces, the same as the animals. These are indicates a mangrove monitor, they're very rare in captivity. This is a, we've got a female sent down from a, a man in Cairns as a, for a breeding line. This is our male, we'll put him in there. And this is the little female. All right. And they're beautiful looking little goannas. And I suppose we should point out that monitor is funny talk amongst lizard people for goannas. Yes, that's right, yes. Yeah, they're certainly at home in the water. Yeah, well, it's all heated in there to 28 and all filtered, as you can see. So it's, it's like the Hilton for the Goannas, really. <laughs> my, my girlfriend's not very happy. They used to get a spa room before she did. <laughs> oh. And he's a cracker. These days you can buy cages to put snakes and lizards in. Yes, you can, Don. And it's the best way to set them up is, is go for a wooden vivarium so you can have your correct venting over the, one at the bottom and one at the top so you get your heat circulation through the cage. And that's just one of those porcelain uh, chook heating that, globes. That's, that's right. And you put the cover over it to stop the snake from burning itself on there. Yeah. With your lizards, you have to really have a UV light and then you put a cover over that so the uh, lizard or the snake can't get into your tube as well. This is all heated in here, so they do stay warm, so we don't run into any respiratory problems. Yeah, it's a bit of a chilly going. day today, so... Yeah, it's, this is a bell phase. Right. These are the two females. And we'll get a couple of the big boys out. Come on. It's, and you can see the tail oh, slapping yeah. going on. Yeah. Come on, mate. They've all got a couple of bales of hay in there so they can stay nice and warm, and that's the other male. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> they do whip the old tail yeah, around, so don't they? They're pretty quiet. You've just got to be careful of them, though, because they will have a bit of a nip now and then, as you can see. Essentially, these aren't much different from aviaries for, for birds, obviously. It's what half inch by inch weld mesh. Mm -hmm. But especially with the monitors and the lizards, they will yeah. dig. So we put this mesh underneath the swell and then dirt over the top and compact yeah. it down to stop them digging out. And the a good thing about having, you can put your animals outside, they do get the natural sun. Now that's an important thing, isn't it? That calcium uptake in any animals depends oh, oh, upon exposure to sunlight. Oh, for sure. There's a lot of artificial lights and tubes yeah. nowadays what will do it. And they are very, very good, some of, them, some of the ones on the market, but they're nowhere near as good as the natural sun. And the point is that we should 
stress is with all things, whether it's birds or lizards or whatever, they don't get the sunlight, they don't get the calcium, that means they get rickets. That's dead right. Wonderful looking creature. Yeah, this is a black-headed python. Now, as I understand it, these can be dangerous in the house. Uh, no, they can't be, no. They're, they're quite a harmless animal. Um, That's not what I heard. I, I heard a story <laughs> that one of these, when you were in the middle of the night and you got up to go, and what happened? Yes, yeah, so I got up to go to the toilet and uh, it was quite dark and I never turned the light on and uh, there was a snake curled around the toilet seat there and it bit me on the willy. <laughs> <laughs> so how do, you extricate, <laughs> how do you extricate yourself from that? Call your girlfriend. Oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, I called my girlfriend and... Uh, so this is... So, this sorry. is Selena and uh, she came in and uh, she had to get down on her hands and knees and blow into the snake's mouth. The snake's mouth. <laughs> to uh, get it to release me. Did it work? <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it's a terrifying thing in the middle of the night. Yeah, I thought I was getting a bit jealous actually. <laughs> I wonder what he was doing in there. <laughs> These are ridgetail monitors, Don. This is our little female here. We've got a few of these, and this is a male. Um, she just laid 13 eggs for us not long ago, which is a, a lot of eggs to come out of a little monitor this size. What do you do with the eggs? And we put them in an incubator just over here. If you want to have a look, I'll yeah. open it up for you. And Ooh, it's all well set up, isn't it? Yeah, we've got the heating tape down the bottom, a thermostat on the front here to keep yeah. it at the correct temperature. And she's done that big, those bigger yeah. eggs. The, these eggs have been in the incubator for now for about two weeks. So when she laid them, they're quite a bit smaller than that. And as they sit in the vermiculite, what is quite moist, the eggs, the baby's growing inside, and the eggs are a soft shell, yeah. so the eggs grow yeah. as well. So those eggs will probably get to half that size again before they hatch. <laughs> This is a male frilled neck. And he thinks there's another one in the land. Yes, he's looking at himself thinking there's another male there. I'm going to have yeah. a go at him. Is there any export market for these at the moment? I Overseas, I wish there was. It's up to the government to legislate it. There's so much going on smuggling out of Australia and into Australia with exotics. There's more Australian reptiles in captivity than in America than, than there is in Australia. It's ridiculous. The prices are even cheaper in America for our, our bearded dragons than we can sell them for here. They're breeding, I would say, about a million bearded dragons a year over there now.